Okay. And we are now back, and Allie has joined us. So we actually now have faces for everybody. And that everybody meant that I had faces. to move around all of the cameras because tech issues. Um, for anybody that Yay, tech. has come into the room since we started, I uh, just wanted to show you everyone's intended characters. Uh, except that I can't because two of them are now behind other things. I'm going to mess up my whole system here. I'm going to have to redo everything, but that's okay. Not the face. There we go. Yes, the face. So that's going to be what everybody's characters look like. And my character looks like that. <laughs> of course, that's all pre-session zero, so card subject to change. Um, you never know when rolling up a character, you're going to have to shoot them in the head and start over. It's true. All right, so mm -hmm. uh, we were at where characters know each other. Um, up to anybody. Figure out, like, you can all know each other. There can be little tiny pockets of people that know each other. It's totally fine. One thing that I would recommend, that's why you never make only one character. True. One thing that I would recommend is you need to figure out somebody to buddy system with to Jaeger your character anyway. It's not the worst idea for them to also be the person that you know. Um, like there's some, there's some natural logic to that. There's also natural logic to doing it the exact opposite direction and picking somebody else. So what, whoever you want to pick, just make sure you pick someone. I would recommend nobody picking Ari because, I mean, first off, you know, she's not reliable. But mostly because we already know that she's going to be kind of part-time playing for the first two months anyway. So there's no point in having someone who may or may not be here be the person that's supposed to play your it's character if you're not here. Yeah. So I would say crisscross around her but not necessarily yeah and, and my absentees are already planned out with the director and we have a plan for them yeah time. yeah we we have a we have a way to go for when when she's not available i'm on the wrong camera okay um there was one other story element thing that i just thought of that we wanted to discuss but i didn't write it down because i was going to remember it yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about you know which which way we could possibly go and what types of stories you're going to be yep. doing. So, oh, tone. My intended tone for the campaign. Talk about card subject to change. My intended tone for the campaign is death and destruction. High fantasy gothic. Which is to say, not exactly grimdark, but because, let's face it, we're not going to be able to manage grimdark. We're going to act we too stupid with our, and have yeah. too much fun. We're too goofy. Yeah, <laughs> we're 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 gonna we're gonna err too much on the side of you know, of silly factor to truly manage grimdark. Um, so why shoot for it? Right. So there will be times where it's grimdark, and there will be times where it's you know, pie in the face. Mostly I'm kind of aiming for like that, that gothic fantasy kind of feel. Not full grim dark, not full Dark Souls, not full Games Workshop, but definitely inspired by, but with a slightly more playful tinge. We'll see how everybody does. Um, <clears throat> Tone is one of those things that is set more by the players than by the GM, no matter what the GM wants to believe otherwise. <laughs> because I can control how the world works, but if I want to make a super serious campaign, all I've done is give you a world of straight men for your puns. Yeah. True. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I think we lost, lost her. 
We lost, lost, lost? Yes. We lost, lost, lost? We lost, lost without a trace. Lost, 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 lost. But she'll be back. <laughs> no, there's still a trace. Oh, no, no, nope, no. Nope, no, nine more. Trace, trace uh, gone. We're all going to be mixed. Oh, better come back in the right spot. <laughs> I just I think, fixed I it. think she will. I think she will, too. I think, it, I, think, I think we are in order of bottom right <laughs> to top left of who was invited. Because I believe you started, then you it was me and you and me, and then we invited Morden and then Gray, and then actually it was Morden then uh, Lost then Gray then Alan. right, which means that should be a permanent run order now. This is gonna drive second crazy with the cameras. You have no idea. Maybe None. when they go out of order like this, we just put up our blinds until it's all back in order. Like I mean, if things go wild. If things go wild like this, yeah. Like where it's a non-planned error. Yeah, but for, for right now, it's just funny to watch me Twitch. Sure. On Twitch. To Twitch Twitch. There we go. Okay. I've got two half screens over here. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, yes. So, this is this is now the camera <gasps> order, and I just need to fix camera positions. But we can. We can. And then I'll make everything work. What are these ones in our little picture windows? Fate Those points. Are, yeah. Oh, okay. Everyone has them except the other two are now on top of their fates because order of operations and on where pictures are and I have one fate. Things. Yes, everyone starts with one. Um, there is a there is a stream loot card. One. There is a stream loot card where you can get a second. Also, you can get one. One player will get one at the end of each session as determined by chat. We've already used our fate. Well, just remember, there is no fate but what we make. There's only a matter of time before somebody said that. And with me around, it's not very, very much time. Not very long. I almost said it, but... Wait, no. I'll let it slide. Make, this just is once. make me have to put this on top and... Ruin the order of all of my freaking frames. So, while while we're working on this, I'll give a little bit of a topic. Something I read somewhere, and I don't know if we want to do it, but something I read somewhere that was very interesting was the characters starting like a new campaign, especially if you if you might not know each other, but you've at least heard of each other, is something called two truths and a lie, yes. where We've all heard things about each other and we all make up like we all create three things, two things that are true about us and one thing that isn't quite right. But that is something that maybe got rumored around the army and that's what we might know about each other. And that leads to, hey, Gray, so I heard that you did you jumped a mountain lion with your bare hands. That's, that would have been crazy. I mean, there's totally no way. True. But that's what I'm saying. But it, it creates that conversation in the early game, which allows us to get to know each other better, especially on watches in comparison to. So it's cold out. Right. Yeah, I think it's two truths and a lie. I, there are a couple of similar, similar systems. We we may develop something like that to bring in. I like the idea. Um, Definitely, definitely not something we can set up yet because, you know, not everybody has their characters done yet because we haven't finished session zero. But, <clears throat> um, so I, that's pretty much everything short of a character generation discussion. We're, we're up really? to our final point. Yeah, we're doing good. Wow. Um, so character generation questions we had was what kind of starting equipment do we have and also what kind of money starting equipment would be based on race, class, background, build, spent, and the stream loot cards. Also things that will happen in chapter zero. So that's all pretty just straightforward. Um, is multi-classing allowed? Dual classing, I'm okay with. More than dual classing is unlikely. 
unless you can convince me exactly why it's a necessity for the character design that you want to play. Like, if you can come up with the reason why you need to have five different classes, and you can convince me it's valid, you can multi-class five times. If you're like, I kind of want to have spells, but I also want to have, you know, a giant pet cat. Okay, so you want to be a sorcerer ranger. Sure. Fine. I want to have spells, but I also want to have different spells. But I also want to have a pet cat. But I also I, want to be good with weapons. But I also want to have paladin capabilities. All right. Now you just need to decide which character you want to play first. I want to wear plate armor and be smart. Throw an eighteen and throw an eighteen That's... in intelligence instead of using it as a dump stat. That, that also requires a certain amount of uh, roleplay capability on the part of the player. I just like to point that out. Yep. Actually, no, it doesn't because this is tabletop. No, don't put that on, don't put that on me. DM my can feed you anything he wants to. Don't put that on me. My intelligence is going to be high, and my actual intelligence is not that high. Hey, the, the DM can feed you whatever he wants. To. Yeah, just give me a big word second, and I'll, more I'll say it so I sound smart. <laughs> Evocation Wizard Clearly. Pyromancer Sorcerer is fun. Yes, yes it is. And it is a good double dip. And it's a tr honestly a triple dip if you make them a tiefling. Um, the, the flip side of that is you'll never actually get to the highest level spells. And that's the other thing to remember with multiclassing is if you are actually stopping at level 20, then as soon as you multiclass, you know you're not getting above level 16 maybe 18 in one like if you only want one or two levels in a thing that's fine but you're getting a couple low levels in exchange for not getting the highest ones like um it, it's not a great idea uh can we pick any background as long as it makes sense with the military um concept of the story yes conditionally the condition being anything that is game setting specific to a world source book that isn't this one. Talk to me about it. We'll figure out what an equivalent would be, how to make it work, and we can make it happen. But like... But all P player's handbook, we're good. Yeah. But like if you wanted to be like, you know, if, if you wanted House Iron or something like that, well, that doesn't fit here so we have to come up with an equivalent uh alignment considerations i'm not saying that you can't play an evil non-party benefit aligned character i'm just saying with this party make sure you're very good Points at it back to the pvp conversation yes. Yes. Um, related sub question related to that question we are assuming that I mean, we might find, it, find this out in game, but it'd probably be easier if we knew it now. We're assuming that the demon contingent is straight up chaotic evil. We're assuming that they're straight up evil. Straight up evil, okay. Now, you can assume they're straight up chaotic evil if you want, but they are straight up like evil. But they can be assumed to be straight up evil. That's there the important part. Evil right. right. There will be neutral okay. evils, there will be chaotic evils, there will be lawful evils, there will be. Okay. Yeah. But they will definitely be evil. So it is understood that the people that are officially known to be the bad guys are alignment evil. The, the guys who are known to be the bad guys are are one hundred percent the misfits. Am I evil? Yes, I am. Because okay. I think that's important in you know this question. Yeah, I mean, this is this campaign is. I mean, it's gothic. Therefore, it is immediately about extremes, right? So, okay. the bad guys are. Bad guys. Bad so guys. bad that they're not guys. They're demons. Right. Yeah. Demons wanna... means demons. Demons doesn't mean, you know, oh, can I be a demon too? No. I, I'm, I'm really trying really hard not to make one of them Billy Zane. I'm probably going to make one of them Billy You're Zane. You're going to fail. <laughs> it's going to happen. Do we want to take that and segue into what we had to return to? Sure. Since we started That's a good point. Kind of broaching on the topic. Yeah. So, one of the questions that is a very important game theory question, and absolutely, if you only ask one question every session zero ever, 
It's the one question so that you should ask every sentient zero. All right, Elvin, have a good lay down, See man. You, I'll catch you soon. Elvin. Night, Elvin. What boundaries or topics are off limits because they will simply ruin your game experience? And this is, this is the, you know, adult language warning part of the show. Because really these is. are all the adult topics that are going to come up right now. Great. I, and yeah, I definitely agree. It's the most important question ever to ask. Is everyone else blurring? Is that what I should be doing? Yes. There we go. It yeah. doesn't make a difference. You still just see big blotches of color. A everyone's blurring yeah. except for Morden, who green screened with a picture Morden behind him. Green screen. I I'm probably going to get a, a nice little library behind me. We can yeah. do we can do backgrounds because you don't even need to actually have the green screen. Oh, wait. Discord can do it without it. Background right. requires nitro. Never mind. Well, to do a custom it. background requires nitro. No. Yeah. No, it doesn't. I've done it before. Okay. I I'm sorry. We can. We'll look into yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So, boundaries, topics, subjects that are off limits. My theory, as because Ali missed this part, my theory is as a writer, it is important to discuss the bad things that bad people do to demonstrate that they are bad things to do. So, in my opinion, anything that doesn't make someone too uncomfortable to be able to enjoy themselves is on the table so if I, there's anything that you know will make you too uncomfortable to be able to enjoy yourself that conversation happens now this is not a game that will focus okay. on those things this is not vampire the masquerade right so it's not we're not trying to be edgy and center on those elements but i'm just sure. saying that those elements aren't uh, unless they're stated to be out of play they won't be. I don't particularly have anything, but I just, it's the idea of if it hits that point, I will probably say something using the rules you stated earlier of I will DM you. Yeah. If we ever hit a spot where all of a sudden I'm not comfortable with it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, tell the story the way you're going to tell the story. And if something bothers me, I'll let you know. Honestly, that's a really important thing to have available and in consideration anyway, because you may not realize that something's going to right, be right. that problematic for you until it comes up. It's you true. may not. Yeah. Um, I, I, like, I, I would say off the top of my head, too, I don't think I would have any problem. Uh, also, I know how Second writes, so... There's that nothing also he, helps a little. There's nothing he bring, uses regularly in his writing that I do have that problem with, so... Unless he does something out of character for his writing, I don't I'm, anticipate I'm, a I'm problem. I'm just going to point out, the bad guys are literal demons. Yeah. So, there's a whole yeah. lot more that is suddenly on the table. I mean, that's true. I mean, we're talking about demons. Like, there's not... <laughs> I think I'm going to say right now, I have zero tolerance for my character being the victim of any kind of sexual assault. Fair. Fair. And that's why this gets brought up. Yes, that's a point. Yep. So, um, I'm not super comfortable with it being, uh, we have to go take out this evil I incubus thing. Like, I'm, I'm not fond of that story type. Like, we have to go save all of the little virgins from the town because they've all been deflowered violently. I don't particularly want to interact with that storyline as a basis. But I understand they, they're they evil. Evil is evil and all kinds of things. Right. But something I, as a player, will not interact with is that kind of thing happening to my character. Right. right. I, I I think, I, at least for me, I think I, I agree with Morgan where most things probably aren't off the table. But for me, I think viewing, like, oh, this is going to sound weird. I hope I say it right seeing the situation or the aftermath of a situation is a lot different than having it 
on we like having it discuss. happen to the party. Right. Like right. happen to the party, like you said, mm -hmm. that I think I draw the line there. Going in and seeing that holy shit, this happened. Now we've got to now someone's got to pay. That's that's where I would be a little bit more okay with certain things. But again, I think it it's going to be a play by play. But if it's happening to the opportunity party, to avenge a thing yes. is a good and wholesome act. Right. Yes. From having to endure a thing yes. is something the players are not so much good with. Right. I agree the, with that. The difference is uh, retribution and bringing to justice versus being the victim. Right. Yeah, so, so it kind of goes to the, um, uh, it, it's similar to the whole thing about horror, terror, gross out thing. And and again, this is where I say, like, I kind of trust second storytelling in that second is too snooty of a writer to go for the gross out. So <laughs> You're not even wrong. relevant, so even relevant possible triggers, whatever, I suspect suspect that second would deal with in a way that is not the gross out like so i and the gross out's really the kinds of things that we're discussing here is like it doesn't make for a good story right. what what she's talking about just for anyone who doesn't know is <clears throat> stephen king once wrote a piece on the the three principles of horror which is terror horror and gross out, AKA gore factor. He said, terror is the thing that can't be defined. Terror is unloading five clips at the predator and you find a little bit of antifreeze on a leaf and you don't okay, know how much yeah. you hurt it and you don't know how to hurt it and you haven't seen what the thing is. It is undefined. Undefined fear is the greatest fear because your mind attacks you. Um, your mind will work against you to make your situation worse. So that's, that's terror. Horror is a threat defined. It's when you see the predator it's horror terror is the moment where you just hear the john williams score and you see the fin of the shark but you've never seen the face right that's terror horror is when you see the face of jaws because as soon as you as soon as you can identify a thing as soon as you can quantify it with stats we all immediately start working in our heads how to kill it So it changes the face of the fear into something that is quantifiable and anything quantifiable is defeatable. The third state is the gross out. Gross out is, I mean, if I can't terrify you and I can't scare you with horror, I can at least make you feel icky by showing you a bunch of intestines. Um, so it is the weakest of the three states. It is shock value only. It has no lasting value saving private yeah. yeah so i would prefer we don't go to the gross out part yeah <laughs> i mean that that's not, pretty much i'm not good with that stuff that, that, that's all that i'll say yeah. i'm not i'm the i'm the kind of guy that like blood and stuff start showing up on tvs i'm the one that yeah. looks away well and, and that's the thing is if you as a writer you you hope for terror you accept horror, and when all else fails, you just go for the gross out so you can move on to the next scene. You, you, you try to never just go for the gore, because gore without substance is, it, it, it's junk food. It, it's over so quickly that it doesn't stay with the party. What stays with the party is, Shut up. it's nighttime. You are all camped in a cave the cave is roughly 30 feet deep and it domes 15 feet across it's twice as deep as it is wide you have set up camp about three quarters of the way back into the cave there is a thunderstorm outside in the middle of the night you hear a noise but it's not coming from the storm. 
It's from the back of the cave. And you wheel around to see what the threat is, suddenly realizing that the fire is behind you. And the threat is concealed by your own shadows. And all you see, roughly four feet off the ground, is a set of snarling fangs and blood red eyes. Fireball. That's terror. Because you have no clue what the threat is. Did you just just fire a fireball at a hellhound and make it stronger? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) Snap kick reaction. Fireball it. Fireball. Uh, fireball, Wait. Fireball. Wait. Did did that just my fireball? The darkness. (laughs) So my point is, since second is too gro- is too snooty a writer to go for the gross out when not absolutely necessary, that most of the things that one would likely to have a problem being involved is at the gross out stage. Right. Like, 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 lost. I mean, can't do this thing happening to me. Um, yes, but even still, I could approach that sequence and the threat of that sequence from a terror perspective right. and she would still just know. Yeah. She would know. So that's, that's a, yeah. that's fair to say. I just don't want to be involved in the potential for this storyline. Yeah. yeah fine. Fair. It's off the table. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I, I, I think, you know, uh, what Ace said, anything that is not hitting the gross out is probably not going to be an issue for there's there, there's going to be a little gross out in chapter zero because I mean okay there's going to be some aftermath. There's very little that's going to really mess. With me. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there's that. Um. Back into character design. Multiclassing we just did. Pick any background. Yes. Alignment considerations. Yes. Um. Rolling for hit points. Unless somebody is inherently a fan of the flat value system where you take the average of the high and the low roll and then round up, and that's how you get a 5 for a D8 as a flat hit point value. <clears throat> for people that don't know, that's that's how that system works. Unless somebody is really a fan of the flat value, I don't like it. And the reason I don't like it is, and you'll see this with 5th edition, I really feel that the point of 5th edition is in many cases to remove die rolls from D&D when the dice aren't important. So that dice are only used for important things. Okay. My uh, my understanding of a game system the more i look at the way the mechanics are written the more i feel that dice should be used for important things and things that aren't important you can just work around without rolling dice okay to that end hit points should always be important i don't like the flat system but i also understand people not wanting to make yes great dice should be used to make the drama heightened 100 percent it's the dice are the vagaries of if fate smiles on you or not. So they should be used for important situations. And the more you hold them for that, the more important they get. Um, I'm not a fan of the flat die, but I also understand that a lot of people really think it sucks if they get one or two hit points on a level. And I completely agree. So what I'm proposing is we use all rolls to gain hit points are considered to have advantage. All right, so two rolls take the highest. Yeah. yeah. You could roll two ones on D10s. Right. And, and if you do, that's just fate. And at that point, it's not my fault that you one percented that shit. Right. Um, it will... It will, oddly enough, on average, only give you a slightly better than average roll but it will always make you feel like you are very much less likely to get a below average roll. And that's really the point. 
Um, so I'm I'm totally okay with that. I think that. Yeah. Um, other than that, we have uh, a system called Fate Points. If you're familiar with GM Inspiration, that's all Fate Points are. The reason why we have calling them Fate Points is A, we were already playing a game that used this mechanic before TSR liberally borrowed it. Um, secondly, there is already Inspiration GM inspiration and an inspired trait and all three are different and that's terrible naming conventions. So it's just an attempt to try to remove what the GM does from what the bard does, for example. Um, how they work exactly the same. They're just, it's just inspiration. We're going to call it fate. That way there's less confusion when a bard shows up, if a bard shows up. At one point we almost had a bard in the party, so it was really going to be important. Um, why also a bard could still show up. A bard still could show up. Somebody could, after the si listening to all this, show you, yeah, I want to play my bard. I mean, that's the thing that can happen. Um, another thing that we're going to be using is something called build points. Okay? So... Um, for those of you who are in the call, you will see build points in the description, uh, in, in the chat down below. I put this exact image for everybody in the room. Yeah. Yeah. I'm putting it up here so that you guys can see what the mechanic mm -hmm. is. Um, build points are a way to affect your character at start with a risk reward system where you get benefits for taking on added risk. And it's also a way for the GM to have a party start beyond zero experience in a way where the players have a little bit more control than just added levels. All right. Um, and I'm going to go over this be one at a time because this is a different mechanic. This is something that I, I think the only person that's ever really played with this was Allie, to be totally honest. Um, so at the top are four drawbacks. You can take each one only once. You can take all four. This is, would give you a maximum of seven additional build. Okay. Arch nemesis. An arch nemesis is an enemy that is party level. It is going to be a threat the entire party needs to deal with. Think... Venger from the original animated series. Think, um, um, Strahd. Think Strahd. Think any big threat. This is a massive, massive thing. It's going to be CR party plus fifty percent, and as the party levels the arch nemesis will continue to level so that they are always CR average party level plus 50%. It's a big threat. You are asking for a Lex Luthor. And this is a Lex Luthor that is trying to kill you. He'll kill the party to kill you, but he's trying to kill you. So and if the rest of you step out of the way and go, no, <laughs> then, uh, then Dracula. Oh, sure. Here he is. I'm sorry. You piss off who? Here you go. Have have some lunch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a nemesis is a much weaker version of an arch nemesis. It is a threat specifically for you. This is going to be a, a, a threat at your level that will increase at your level. This m is someone coming directly for you. And this can be fun because it can be a challenge that you're going to have to deal with. It's going to be someone designed to be a foil to your character and your character's build. But they are trying to kill you. And nemeses and arch nemeses are the one time where as a GM, I am going to try to kill you because you signed the paperwork. 
Okay. He literally asked for it. Every you put your name on the line that says that I am going to kill you now. Yeah. Everything else, I am trying to entertain you and give you a threat that I hope that you will overcome. Nemeses and arch nemeses, you asked for it. You legitimately said, I want you to bring me, I want you to come at me as hard as you can. This is an unskilled, this is, this is a, you know, uh, th unscaled mod. this is an unscaled mod. Yeah. This is, this yeah. is me just coming after you. This is an unscaled mod. If you want them, they're one point or two points. Useful. If it's too much of a threat, it's too much of a threat and you don't take them. And that's totally fine. If you want to have a nemesis, a lot of people in this system will just pick a nemesis because it just gives us one other Sounds lieutenant. Easy. Yeah, it's fun, right? And if nothing else, it's still going to be five on one. So you're going to be okay. More than likely. Probably just good role play. <clears throat> yeah, probably. probably good role play. Um, mm -hmm. Disadvantage to hit or damage monster type. This is a one point drawback. You will always be at disadvantage against uh, to, to hit and to do damage to one type of monster. There's a bunch of reasons why this can be a thing. Come up with what you want. So real quick. So that so to hit and damage. So whenever we roll damage rolls, we have to roll twice and take the lower value. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I missed that part, too. <laughs> that's very specific, right? Well, because that was a cha that was an addition from what you sent to us, wasn't it? Because I feel like I either that or I missed it. Because I was sitting here like, wow, that wouldn't be too bad. Because then I can just cast a spell that it's a save or suck spell. That's not a to hit spell, right? So that yeah. would that nerfs that hard. Yeah, I mi I missed it. Said damage, but yeah, no, it does on that paperwork. Yep. I missed it. Well, and that's that's especially that's even worse for two hit spells because not only are you at disadvantage to hit you then do yep. less you hit, damage you're still doing less damage you're, you, you are likely doing less damage yes um it is a that is a one point drawback it is a two point drawback if the monster type you take is infernal because that means demons and devils That's fair. and that should that is going to be 40 to 50 percent of everything you run into in the party in the campaign no longer humanoid what's that no longer humanoid on that list. Humanoid, um, yeah, also yeah. humanoid because humanoids are just so many things. Okay, just wanted to check because yeah. I know that was on the initial list you sent. Yeah, so uh, human. If anybody's taking that, um, we can I can put the list of what each category is in the chat. There's, Please do. There's quite a there's quite yeah. a few. There's yeah. like fifteen different types of enemies. Right, and keep in mind you're choosing a monster type, not a monster subtype. So okay, yeah, that's a very important distinction. Right, you you you, you can't choose, you know, yeah. canines. You have to choose beasts. Beasts. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a very important. Yeah. Distinction. You can't choose non-corporeal mm -hmm. undead. You have to choose undead. Yeah. Okay. So it's <clears throat> it's pretty big, but also, I mean, th these are character building things, and it's a big benefit if you take it. Um, the next one is advantage to be hit or damaged by monster type. Great. See, that's so strong. It's the same thing yeah. in reverse. If you take advantage against, uh, you know, X has advantage against you, then their attacks are rerollable. Their damage is rerollable. Uh, one build point for all monster types. Two build points if you choose humanoid. Or infernal. So again, you can get seven points. If you get all seven points, You're you dead. are going to die. <laughs> You're dead. Because if you get seven points, I guarantee, and you pick the same monster type for your uh, advantage and disadvantage, I guarantee to you, your arch nemesis is in that group. <laughs> you're going to die because um, you literally asked for it but you signed on the dotted line but that's literally i want to start with twice the character as the rest of the party Whoops. in order to have this risk okay sure if you can pull it off it's a huge thing if you can't 
two weeks from now, we're working on your next character. Or a new character. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the things that you can spend these on. The first one is ability skill increase. Costs one point. Uh, that is two points added to a stat or one point added to two stats. Your choice. Add one level to your character. One point. Race access. Race access. In the document that you already have that has the races in it, anything listed as a common race costs zero build. Anything listed as a uncommon race costs one. Anything listed as a rare race costs two. And anything listed as a race from the Hagrilon Empire costs two. Because they're also rare. Where you are. The reason for this is a lot of those races have inherent bonuses and benefits that are more powerful. And thus, that's a balancing yeah. aspect to the characters across the board. That's my rationale for it. Uh, you can you choose a below us. What's that? What's that? Sorry, you I just got... posted the, the, I posted the in the chat below us. Yeah, sorry. Um, you can choose a feat. Uh, you can choose four levels of spells to be in your spell book, which also means it didn't cost you 200 gold. So that's a benefit. Uh, you can choose a henchman or a henchy. The way a henchy works is they are an NPC that is equal or lower level than you. The only time they would be equal is if you're level one. They are the Samwise Gamgee for your character. They are the Alfred for your character. They are a loyal retainer that will be played by me. I would like to uh, defend my boy Samwise. I mean, he was a tank. He was a tank. <laughs> and he's the only reason why the ring got destroyed in the exactly. end. Exactly. I say he's yep. more of a main character than Frodo. I mean, he was a tank. I have actually seen a thesis that made that argument. Mm -hmm. Because the whole thing doesn't happen if Samwise isn't in the wrong spot. But remember, this is a... Yeah, he's not caught by the window. Yep. yep. This is a henchman of equal potency to a nemesis. So that's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, is. it still fits. Yeah. Uh, an well, ally is, is well, well, the henchman is equal the henchman or will always be lower. Yeah, the henchman should should always be lower than you by at least the I'm level. saying it's one build. Yes. I'm oh, saying it it's of equal potency yeah. cost-wise. It is equal to a nemesis. Yeah. So it can have an equal benefit to a nemesis's handicap. Yeah. Uh, an ally is an NPC that is equal or greater than your level. They are a contact that your character has and someone that will come into and out of the campaign. You won't be able to control when they show up. That's all on me. But it is someone that <clears throat> is going to be powerful enough to be another player or perhaps even just game-changing in a situation. But at GM's discretion. But at GM's discretion. Mm -hmm. uh, for anyone who is a Black Adder fan, consider Lord Flashheart to be an ally. Like, something of that strength. Um, <clears throat> <Yeah. clears throat> Woof! Um, so there you go. Membership is being part of an organization that would have perks or advantages. Um, a religious order, a secret sect, a thieves guild, that kind of a thing. Starting with that information is a benefit and can be utilized in certain situations. So that's a perk. Uh, starting with a magic item, the cost depends on the magic item that you want to start with and, you know, discuss it with me privately. And any other weird request you can come up with Discuss it with me and we'll think about it. Literally everything on here that's not ASL race access and level started as a strange request. And then I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to add that to the list. So you, uh, all of your characters will start with four build and membership. Um...
Navarin army for free. Do I, I have a question if I can? Sure. Other, or I can wait for a moment. No, no, you may Go not. For it. So my question is when it comes to membership, if we continue going forward, is that membership even, I mean, is it even going to benefit us if we have a membership with stuff that's behind us? It will be if something odd happens and you find some of it in front of you. Okay. That's what I just wanted to know that that's, that's even a jam. possibility. Yeah. 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 We're, not, we're not literally saying we're not wasting a point by putting a membership and then choosing to go forward. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's, it's, I, that's all I was checking. It, it, it's a lot of trust, trust the GM kind of stuff on that one. Yeah, but okay. it's you have yeah. to just be yeah. A li, that's a little bit trust the right. GME, and some things will be easier to work in than others. Right. But well, yeah, generally that's that's the intention. So yeah, if you I, have a go ahead, no, Morton. Go on. You're good. Finish do you your, have finish a your list name. of? Is it a list of memberships possible, or we more just approach you saying, hey, this is the kind of membership we're looking for. Do you have one? I would say go with that right now because I don't have everything in this. This is kind of a new game world for me, so I don't have everything fleshed out, but like, we can... You don't have everything done within, like, two days? I mean, come on. No, because I've written 300-page documents to run games before and watched them die after two sessions, so no. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, and you know, I'll wait and see what we need, and then as we need it, I'll flush it out. It's okay. not a problem. Sorry for interrupting you. Morgan. No, that was perfect. No, you're you're fine. So if I just heard you right, we're starting with the membership Navarre Army and four points. Yes, but right. depending on what race you are, some of that's already been right. Yes, right. used. And then, then this is going to, then, you know, we start with four, so we could potentially, if I, say, took everything and I made a, uh, uh, I'm going to die right now character, it could be a, what, 11 points? We'll do my math right? Yes. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> and if you went with a bog standard human or assimilated elf or dwarf vis-a-vis -vis no subclass, just the base class abilities... You'd have all of those available because you didn't even spend any on race. Right. Also, you'd die. Right. <laughs> Especially since. Also, it would be irrelevant race. because. <laughs> right. Yeah. Also, all that time would be gone and you'd be rolling again. <laughs> so I'm just going to take um, all of my points and levels. Thank you. Oh, God. No, I'm going to come in at level. Be a nemesis that's you way be... bigger than any of us can deal with. Stop that. Yeah, you would be level. 12. Yes. yes. And so would your arch nemesis, and he would just come in and eat the party. He would step on the rest of us. <laughs> Literally, you know, you know Venger Andrew. would show up and just go, I just want him. And the rest of the party would go, You can have him. Yeah. Have him. There you go. He's right there. We can't go stop ahead. Right through. Whoopsie. Uh, no, can we can we here. can we talk about this? Yeah, can we talk about this? Let's let's just friendly discussion. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> this is where this is when you just hear the words "touch of death." <laughs> I yeah. will give you a back massage if you just let me go. <laughs> What's your skill? <laughs> <laughs> so so that's so what that's build is going to be. Um, your back massage that lets you guys. Do your characters however you want. Um, you have access to the Discord, which I'm probably going to be opening to everyone once this hits YouTube. Once, oh. Yeah, once, only once. Uh, once this hits YouTube, <laughs> I'll be opening this to everybody, and the notes, the the, the link will be in the doobly-doo below. And doobly -doo. um, then everybody can go in and... We'll have the character sheets up and some other reference information so people that want to follow along with the story will have, you know, additional information other than just the uh, the VODs and podcast. Do, oh, fuck, what was I just saying? Do, do, oh, do you do. want us, uh, do we want to change our names in the Discord to be our character names or just leave them as our names? Because you can nickname I, I haven't decided yet. I mean, 
one of the things that I'm doing, as you can see on the description here, is putting your your names and your character names right. so that people can keep track on both. Let's toggle back to the stream and look it up. Right. <laughs> um, also, you'll notice that... There's only five of us. Ace is the only one that has the bottom line filled in. Basically, if you have a contact information, you wanted either a Twitch or a... A Twitch page, a YouTube page, a Twitter account, something, whatever you want to put anywhere. You know, oh, I, okay. I have one line down there that I can do for additional, for for a additional contact point. Oh, okay. Um, most people on these usually use Twitters because it's just the easiest one to then put all the other information on your Twitter. But, okay. Yeah. Right. And a lot of bots can just auto chat. Lost a lot of that, but uh, that's pretty much everything I had as far as the what I wanted to cover during session zero. Um, Allie obviously you cover all to... of Ace's questions. Yes, I covered all of Ace's questions. I covered all of my questions. It's impressive. Um, I mean, it only took three my hours. Long list of questions. <laughs> It was a it was very comprehensive list. list. It was but a good I, list. That was a good list. I just list. tried to think of everything that should or could be asked on a and that's and, and and you should make sure you hit all of them on a session zero. So yeah. That's the whole point. Otherwise why have one? Does anybody have any other questions or So we're starting today, to right? <laughs> so all right, so everybody has their characters already done, right? Let's go. Everyone's good, right? Let's let's just go. I will no, call my out. I mean, I, I do done. not, but I don't actually have to have mine rolled up right away. It's fine. <laughs> I can actually play my character without having my character rolled up right away. Right, there you go. Technically. Go. I'm ready. Technically. Go. Start rolling. I'm sorry. I have things I need to do with the with the, the character okay. generator. Uh, I, I am not playing the race I thought I was going to, so I need to fix things. Do you really? Yes. Okay. I mean, that's part of that's part of why you session zero because if you come in and go yep. oh oh i want to change that or oh oh this is oh, a you different realize idea. something during session zero that made yeah. you think differently and, and that's yeah. why you have session zero so that you can have an idea for the scope and the direction of the campaign and then you can decide what you i want, want my level 12 human that's yeah. All. yeah exactly or, See, you and know, this is why I wait to roll up my character. Or, or, or a level two human that has 18s in every set. I got two MP. There is that. Yep. That is also something that could happen. I got two MP. Still going to be playing a rogue. Yay. That has not changed. Good. So, rogue, wizard, fighter, alley, chef. Yes. I mean, basically covers That's all of the directions. Balanced, actually. That's it's pretty balanced. It's a good balanced party, just not in the direction that most parties would balance. Like, okay. it's perfectly balanced, slightly one shift to the yeah. right, but it's fine. It's it's majorly uh, martial. It's not what most people do? Mm, they're actually not as much because magic is so extensive at this point yeah. mm. that you tend to see two people who are magic classes, at least. Okay. That are, like, we're not, I'm not necessarily counting the <laughs> healer in there either. You normally right. got like one guy up at the front um, and two different types of casters and then the healer. Yeah, usually one okay. front line, two mid line, two back line. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm counting, as you said, I'm counting the, the healer almost midline in that. In that I, I would agree with that. I, I would agree that the, that that character class um, is, is going to be pretty much a midline because it's almost entirely support and then yep. D8 hit eight. points and simple weapons. So, yep. yeah. Hey, I'm a league D8 hit points and, well, okay, I get a little bit more than simple weapons. But I'm mostly simple. Of, almost most. That's monk. Monk, Ranger, and Rogue are D8, right? Yep. And yep. Fighter, and Cleric. Is 10. Oh, Cleric is D8 too? Yeah, Cleric is a D8 because Cleric is actually supposed to be frontline right. um, if they're supposed to be healer because they assume you're going to take the li life, so you actually have access to heavy. 
and then d8 and d8 is, or d10 is pally and fighter d12 is barb and then haha <laughs> wizard d6 yeah it's better than some of the homebrews that have a d4 <laughs> it's better than some say. of the additions that had a d4 how do you play with a d4 you very carefully uh, you you stay <laughs> hidden the entire time you play a, fifth line in a three-man party there's a you cast your spell and then run away right there's a, a, a homebrew race that i actually thought was pretty cool but it was basically a frankenstein race but it couldn't the only way it was able to be healed was by electric so you had to like actively either get a wizard or someone who could literally like call lightning bolts down on you right or have that yourself because the other way you would never be able to just you would never be able to do anything you would die so quickly what was, what was, what was that old thing they had at larp it was like um uh dark elf scholar or something could walk out yep. in broad daylight and just fall unconscious yeah dark elves at level back in the day <clears throat> Elves at level one had negative one hit points. Scholars started with two hit... Well, elves had negative one hit points at all times. Scholars started with two hit points. So elven scholars started with negative... Started with one. Okay? Which is fine. Except that a dark elf in daylight vis-a-vis -vis in a situation that is causing a shadow created by the sun has negative one hit points. So they walk out the door, stand in the direct sunlight, and their maximum hit points are zero. So does that mean when the sun is directly above them and there is no shadow... There is still a shadow they at your face. Shut, shut, shut. They, they would be fine as long as their shoulders were no wider than both of their ankles <laughs> next to each other. No, no, I never played that, but I did play a level one scholar at th this time, so I don't want to hear about your D6 hit points. <laughs> yeah. Because she had a total of two. Because I looked around for two. Fair enough. I cheated. So shut up. I played a barbarian. And my first, and my first event was walking around. My first fight, everything was swinging sixes. Yeah, I played a barbarian fighter. So, she had two. Up. I had eight. I'm like, this is. Uh, they're, they're they're swinging fours, and I'm like, this is fine. And she's like, shut your mouth. <laughs> I'm dead two times over. Oh, and I was the only person that had a light source, and we had to go find a thing. They're like, here, get out in front with your light source. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> What's the matter with you? I'm sitting there with a light, like. Hold it out like, like this. Like get the ten foot pole out and put yeah. the light forward. <laughs> trying, trying to do your best. Trying, trying to be fish. second rank, sticking my light forward. <laughs> Past everybody in the front line. Yep. Like just don't hit my hand. <laughs> okay. So I don't want to hear about your decks. <laughs> okay. I take it back. It's fine. <laughs> One of these days we'll make a, we'll we'll make a D four homebrew and. Ace will have to GM it, and I'll play it, and I'll something will come around the corner, and I'll scream. I will you kill done? you on accident. <laughs> so now everybody has, you know, a, a better idea of what the campaign's going to be, and also everybody has a better idea of what, you know, what the requirements are going to be, uh, where the campaign's going to go, how to build a character, so. How do you feel preparation wise now as opposed to before session zero? I feel good. I feel like it cleared things up. Cool. Yep. I think I got everything yep. I need to, to flush everything out and make sure that we're we're golden. Yay. Cause I mean that Yay. that's that's the whole point of session zeros is to make sure that you know, information has come out and everything got covered. Um, you guys... I definitely feel I got a much better read on the meta of your intent as the, the controller and everybody else's methodology of going forward for the game. So that's, I think, a compatible thing. Cool. Yeah, I yeah. definitely, definitely it's important. Um, so uh, I'm going to be available 
tonight. I mean, maybe we'll stick around if somebody wants to do some live rolling. We can do a, we can roll a character. Um, but as far as the uh, the session zero part, I think we're done. Um, the VOD will be up, and then this is also going to be posted on YouTube. So if anybody looks over the session zero, and then another character, another uh, idea springs to your head of a question, again, don't hesitate to ask me. Uh, if it's something I think the whole group needs to know, then I will post the answer to everybody. Uh, but definitely, this is... This is the best way to do it because now everybody knows what we're doing. Everybody knows why we're doing it the way we are. And, you know, we'll be able to hopefully move forward. And also hopefully all of our camera positions are set and I just have to rename and, you know, realign everything so that it's not on top of each other the wrong way. So I'm going to stop the recording for that. And then, you know, we'll, we'll move on to other stuff in a minute, but everybody, Thank you very much. Uh, if this is still on the piece on YouTube, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe and all of the things. And uh, I, we will see you all again for the next one. In the meantime, everybody, wave hi and bye. See you next Tuesday. See you all later. Bye.